Welcome to the workshop and to episode three of my miniature Land Rover build. If you saw the first two episodes, you would have seen me build the chassis, steering and suspension system, followed by this plywood body. Now in this video, I'm going to get everything finished off. I want it finished and tested. This means there's lots of small jobs to do, but most of all, I need to get all of the wiring installed and fitted, and I need to fit and fabricate brackets for all of the electronic controls, such as the pedals and the dashboard. So I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. The electrical system for this car is actually more complex and more complicated than the electrical system in my actual Land Rover. It has a circuit board, which my Land Rover certainly doesn't. So the plan is to find space for the charge port, battery terminals, throttle assembly, motor controller, brake controller, the dashboard switches, all of these wires and this thing. And I have to find space for all of those in here. The motor, the motor controller, the motor brake, the battery terminals, all that sort of thing is going to go at the back. It has to because that's where the motor is. Whereas all of the more complicated stuff such as the ECU, the dashboard switches, all that sort of stuff is going to go at the front. Again, it has to because that's where you control the car from. I'm going to start by putting all the simple stuff in at the back because I'm a simple person and I shall start with the simplest job which is to fit this. I've been working on this for a while now and I think I've found the best route for all of the different wiring systems. Now obviously this is a bit tricky because the loom is designed for the scooter not for the car and things are just in different places like the controls and the lights and various other items. So I found what I think is the best route and I will talk you through what I've done. This is the main spine of the loom which connects the front and rear electrical systems. This is actually two looms cable tied together, one loom for the drive system and another one for the lighting. The drive loom starts at the charging socket on the front bulkhead. That power is then sent backwards to the area under the seat to charge the batteries through these terminals. During use, the batteries then send power back through these cables and into the motor controller. The motor controller receives all of its instructions via this plug, which follows the spine to the front where it picks up demands from the ECU. The lighting loom also starts at the back where it picks up its power from the motor controller. It then follows the same route through the car where it too picks up demands from the ECU. Some of those switch feeds are then sent to the front lighting system. The rest are then sent back along the spine to power the rear lights via this plug. The next thing I want to do is build the dashboard panel with all the switches and controls in it, which means I need to take this thing apart. For the dashboard panel, I'm going to use this piece of clear Perspex. Now, I was going to use a piece of aluminium, but then I found this, and I just think this is a cooler idea. You'll be able to see through it, see all the wires and the circuit boards. Just makes it a little bit more interesting.
done my best to tidy up all of these wires. I know this all looks a little bit chaotic still, but it's a lot less messy than it was earlier. On the front, we have the ignition switch and the battery indicator, the high and low range, the indicators and the headlights. This is the horn, this is the hazard lights. We also have the low range indicator and the indicator lights left and right. There's a couple of other bits I need to fit under the bonnet, the first of which is this. This is the original charge socket from the scooter. It's a very simple three pin socket and this is going to go in the dashboard just above the accelerator pedal. While I do understand the basic layout of this electrical system, I'm not going to pretend that I know actually how it works. You know, all the kind of electronic resistance and polarities and all this kind of thing. I don't know how it works. I'm not going to pretend to. Uh, so basically what I'll say is that all of this loom is exactly as it was when I removed it from the scooter. I haven't modified anything. I haven't tried to be clever and move anything around or try to change anything. The whole loom is exactly as it was when it went in. There is a couple of bits that I need to make either a bit longer or a bit shorter to adapt for the space that I have. But even in that case, you'll see that I've simply done a loop of the loom under the car and on the bulkhead simply because the loom was longer than I needed it to be and I didn't want to cut things unnecessarily so I did the loop to lose the extra length. This would have sat underneath the handlebars and you would have operated it with your thumbs, right hand side for forwards, left hand side for backwards, but I'm going to use it at 90 degrees so you essentially have a forwards pedal and a backwards pedal. my kids are going to be stepping on this with their hooligan feet and it's not designed for that. So I think the end of the spindle needs reinforcing. Next, I need a cover to protect this assembly from all the elements on the outside. The way to do this is to use a computer program to design a kind of a cover, a shroud that's going to sit over it, right height, the right shape, with all the right cutouts for the levers to go up and down and of course for the cover to slide on. And then to make this on a 3D printer so that it can be exactly the shape I need. However, this is the real world. So, I'm going to cut it from this piece of guttering. Now that that's done, I can get back to what I was trying to do in the first place, which is to connect this lead into this circuit board, which as you can see clearly is not long enough, so I need to make this control wire about a foot longer. That's 
everything finished under the dashboard, all of the wiring, all of the switches, what I need to do now is make a removable cover to protect all of this from the elements when the wheels are turning. It's just going to spit water and mud all over the electrics. Oh, hey, Harry, how you doing? <laughs> Next I need to recreate the front grille. Now if you look at my Land Rover you can see that it is this kind of galvanised lattice work of steel wire and to recreate that I have found this. This is the kind of mesh that they use for sort of sieving gravel and stones and things like that. Anyway I think it's going to be just perfect. I need to make a template for fixing it on so cutty cutty, drilly drilly, you get the idea. side lights I'm going to use these LEDs. These are perfect because they're the right scale size and shape. They're also available in 24 volt which means they match the system. They're also available in orange and red and various other colours which means we can use them for the brake lights and the indicators as well. The headlight circuit plugs into the main loom here and goes up the bulkhead along the front wing into this junction box. From there it's sent up these two wires to the headlights and out to the side lights. The feed for the front indicators joins the loom via this plug, which feeds into a junction box underneath the front wing. From there it separates into two separate feeds for the right and left indicators. The rear lighting system is far simpler. Everything comes from the loom via this plug, which feeds round onto the rear panel and separates into left and right hand circuits, each of which then goes into another junction box where it is separated again to feed the indicators and side lights. All of which means I'm basically now ready to attach the body onto the frame, which is a moment I've been waiting for forever. After that, there's just a couple of little finishing touches to do and it's finished. Okay, Harry, we're ready to put the body on. Yeah, I'm ready. Well done, and I'll carry it across.
Regular viewers of my channel will know that this is not actually the first of these cars that I've made, it's actually the third. All three were based on the same mobility scooters and all three are basically identical, but as the old saying goes, some are more equal than others. This latest one I've made, I really wanted to kind of go to town on it and do extra little bits, mainly for the camera, such as on the chassis, I actually extended the back of the chassis out to the rear of the body to make a proper rear chassis member like an actual Land Rover has. I also did the same at the front and I fabricated up the uh, bumper at the front to match my Land Rover. I didn't go to this effort on the old ones. The one that I originally built, which was for my kids, which was a gray one, that just had uh, wooden bumpers front and back. But the second one, the green one that I built for my brother's kids, that one was a little bit different because my brother did the wiring and he actually knows what he's doing. He wired up a really clever system where it had pressure sensitive rubber bumpers. So if one of the boys hit a building or a tree or a bench or another child, it would immediately trigger the bumper and it would cut out the feed to the motor, thereby making sure that, okay, they might hit something and they might hurt themselves, but at least the car will stop and then you can then reset it and the kids can carry on. So that was pretty good. Since I made the last video, I have had quite a lot of requests for information about this car, specifications such as where I got all the bits, what they were, you know, links to buy them, measurements, all that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is, rather than putting that at the end of this video, I'm going to make a fourth video that will contain all that sort of thing and a bit more of a test of the car so I can show you how good it is, how capable it is, that sort of thing. I really hope you've enjoyed this series. I've certainly enjoyed making it. Uh, as I say, I will do the fourth video. I don't know when that'll be, but I'll do it as soon as I can. So again, thanks for watching. See you next time.